Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. I've got a shocker for you. You remember that tape I did in August? Warning, sh shocking prophecy, terrifying vision. Well, my friend and I talked last night. And I thought it ended there. Well, she just informed me to please inform those of you who need to hear this that that vision came to pass. She went out with this fine, debonair, together-looking brother. And they decided, remember I just got through doing a tape about, y'all, let's go get high together? Yeah. Well, they decided they were going to go up to his apartment and get high. And she had no intentions of doing anything else but getting high. Uh-huh. Now, he took her to a very... Now, this is how they spent their evening. He picked her up. She was dressed. She was laid. He was laid. They were looking good. And they go to this nice, swanky restaurant. She said that he, he really, really treated her to a nice place. You know, most of us ladies would be impressed. Well, her first warning after she had gotten the shocking vision warning, this particular night, her first warning was from another friend who asked her, well, you know, stuff goes on. Are you sure you want to do this? You sure you want to go up to his place? For some reason, she was feeling skittish about it. And my friend says, well, hey, you know, we ain't doing nothing. We just going to, you know, get a little high. So they go up to his place to get high. Mm -hmm. And as they go up to get high, she made it very plain she had no intentions of sex. So, but I want to say this one thing too. Listen to this. She informed me that it was that time of the month. So it wasn't a conducive time for that in the first place. Well, he decides... And they start getting high. He decides to choke her out. Choke her out, you guys. And he snatches her tampon out of her and rapes her. Or he snatches her, snatches it out, chokes her out, and rapes her. Either way, she got raped. It was brutal. He was digging his nails. It, it was horrible. When he got through, okay, when he got through, he tells her to go in there and get dressed. You know, brings her to, tells her to go get dressed. She is devastated, devastated. You got, Those of you who have never been raped is no play thing. You can't play with these total strangers like this and think that you're totally safe because they look good. I don't care what their profession is. And the vision of the guy that I saw was a policeman. Anyway, here she is, devastated, crying, trying to get herself together so she could get out of there. And as soon as she comes out of the bathroom, he reaches up, snatches it out, and slams her down and chokes her out again. And she's trying to reach for the lamp to hit him with, and he, he chokes her totally out. And he rapes her again. You listening, ladies? And you young men who are hanging with other men that like men? Some of you young boys have been raped too many doggone times hanging with the wrong person. You know she was raped three times that night? Three 
times and she wasn't sure if she was going to make it out in one piece. You, you think it's fun. You think it's all glory and and, and it's better than going to school and uh, we're going to get high and we're going to drink the night away and he going to rub on me and, and she going to rub on him and oh, it's going to be nice and they're looking at each other and it's like, it's just so fun. I've got to get to know him. Come on, hook me up, hook me up. And you don't know what the heck they hooking you up with. I watched a movie just this week, of young teenage kids partying. And one girl had no idea that she had been raped a few times until a guy showed her the video. She was unconscious because they slipped a little something-something into her drink. When they slipped a little something-something into her drink, once she was out, one of the guys carried her upstairs to one of the bedrooms of the house and had his way with her. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know there have been times when girls have been carried up in the bedroom and not only one had his way, but two, three, four. Back in my day, we used to call that pulling a train. Gang raping somebody. And I can't tell you how many women and how many young ladies and how many young men and boys have been raped because they placed themselves in a precarious position thinking it was going to be okay. No parents around, no adults around, no supervision. Well, who wants supervision? That ain't cool. Well, neither is getting raped. That ain't cool either, is it? And some of you won't tell a soul because you're too ashamed. You need to tell it because a whole lot of other folks are going to have that happen to them. You need to tell it, you guys. Stop keeping this to yourself. Don't protect your reputation. It's already messed up because you've been flinging it here, there, and wherever. And the people you hang with. You're not only judged by yourself. You're judged by the company you keep. And if you hang with creeps, you got the same label anyway. So tell it. You're not protecting anybody but them. You're not doing yourself any favors. And you're certainly not doing future victims any, any favors. And listen, if they threaten you, this is what I want to say. For all of you people who have been raped or molested or, or um, uh, oh boy, whatever the words are that I'm trying to think of. Listen, you guys. They can threaten you till the cows come home. But the only reason for the threat is because they are afraid of getting caught. And they know you have the key. Use that key and tell it. Shout it on the rooftops until somebody hears you. If you have to get up in front of a whole school auditorium, and tell it, you get it out there. And listen, if any of you are raped, do yourselves a favor. Don't go home and take a shower. Go to the police station. Call 911 and get the police to take you straight to the hospital, the paramedics to take you straight to the hospital and get all that fluid checked because DNA can find the sucker that you can't point your finger to. Even if you don't know their name, their DNA can find them. I'm telling you, you guys have got, you're already taking chances. I've done it too. That's how I ended up getting raped. But I don't care what you did. It's not your fault. You didn't do that to yourself. They did. They victimized you. But that's why the Bible refers to wisdom. 
if we use more wisdom, we can avoid so many pitfalls and so many tragedies. Oh, you guys, okay, I have talked long enough. I'm about talked out. But my heart goes out to you because I know why some of you do what you do. You want to be liked. You want to be accepted. You want to be included. But some of the people you want to be liked, accepted, and included with and by are the very people you need to stay as far away from as the East is from the West because they will do nothing but bring you down. <sighs> okay. If those of you have been raped, those of you have been molested, repeatedly beaten, threatened, whatever, I beg of you, go get help. Call a hotline. As soon as you get free, do not take a shower Get that fluid collected at a hospital. Go to call a rape crisis place, whatever, the police, whoever you have to call. And please get help. Please get help. Some people can get over it with the help of God. But if you're not turning to God, you got to turn to somebody. Only God can heal that totally. But other people can at least get you the help you need until you go to the real help. And they can catch that bad boy or that woman, whoever the perpetrator is, or the parent, or the brother or sister, or the gang, and arrest them. I pray for you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that God will protect you and give you the courage it takes to tell it, to shout it on the rooftops, and that God will remove your shame because, baby, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You're the one that's been hurt. Do you hear me? God bless you. And don't sit on, don't hide it. Don't let them intimidate you. Please, God bless you. Take my advice, okay? <laughs>